In this video, we'll introduce the concept of a vector space in an abstract setting. And uh, please look at what I've written down here. I call a vector space V to be a vector space if it consists of elements, which are called the vectors. And uh, among the vectors, there's a vector addition. You can add them. After the vector addition, the new vector is still inside the vector space. And also, there's a scalar multiplication where you can multiply any constant value k to any vector, you are still uh, inside the vector space V. And uh, we'll look at a lot more examples a bit later, but uh, the first most obvious example is, we can actually look at XY plane. Uh, I use the notation R2 to represent that. It's two-dimensional Euclidean space here. And now um, you see any vector is basically a vector like this. I mean, you can point out a vector to V starting with the origin here. So you see there are many vectors you can look at. And um, basically, uh, you understand the meaning of vector addition, right? For example, you can add two vectors together. And if you recall how you add the vectors, basically, if you have a vector like this, if you have another vector like this, addition is like this. As uh, the basic thing you learn about the vector in school. And also, you understand the meaning of scalar multiplication, right? So basically, if k is a positive constant, what you do is uh, you look at the same vector along the same direction, but you are basically extending the length of the vector. But the direction remains unchanged. If the k as the constant is actually positive. So um, we understand this uh, meaning of vector addition and also scalar multiplication on the xy plane extremely well. And obviously, it is the vector space we look at, but um, we would like to look at more interesting examples. And we understand that, abstractly speaking, as long as the set of elements we look at satisfy these two, these two properties, it means that uh, you understand the meaning of vector addition and scalar multiplication. We'll still call it a vector space as long as it satisfies the next 10 axioms. So you see all the 10 rules that are stated on this page must be satisfied for the vector space V. And you can check all the properties. For example, uh, if you look at the example you understand so well for the xy plane um, i think all the 10 properties are actually very obvious if you look at them very carefully but um let's look at other interesting examples of vector space and let me put it down here so the first example of course is about the xy plane we cover all the points on the plane and basically you see uh, what i'm saying is that every point for every point you can actually draw a vector starting with the origin as the starting point of the vector right so my way of presentation is about using a point and automatically we get a vector like this. So anyway, one point corresponds to one vector. So um, then you can easily check that the previous 10 rules are easily satisfied for our current problem. And you understand the meaning of vector addition and multiplication so well. And the second example is that we can actually talk about matrices. And you see, I can look at all the two by two matrices in the set and I can call each matrix a vector, basically. And in that case, do we understand the meaning of vector addition here? And the naturally defined operation is called a matrix addition, right? For each vector. You can call one matrix a vector now. The vector addition simply means matrix addition. And the scalar multiplication is obvious also. And we have learned it, how to do it on the matrices. And it's an obvious multiplication anyway. So. Um, and you can easily see that um, all the previous rules, the 10 rules for the vector space are, are all correct for the space of two by two matrices. And that's why we call it a vector space for the second example here. And now let's look at the third example. So the third example is about the set of all polynomials of degree at most three. And degree of a polynomial is the highest power of the x term if you use x as a variable for the polynomial. And um, now, basically, you can think of one polynomial of degree at most three as one vector. And can you tell me what is the vector addition now? And of course, in this case, vector addition just means polynomial addition, right? And I trust that you're able to do the polynomial addition quickly. Because for example, if you have uh, two polynomials like this, you see? And of course, both polynomials are inside this set P3, right? Because both polynomials, the first one is degree one, the second one is degree two. And of course, I trust that you can add the two polynomials uh, 
is x squared plus 2x plus 2. And because the highest degree is 2, which is less than 3, so it is still inside this set we look at. So that's the way we define the polynomial addition, which is very obvious. And I understand that you know the scalar multiplication well. So for example, I can do 3 times p1. You can tell me what is the answer. Basically, you're doing the algebraic operations 3 times open bracket 2 plus x close bracket. So the answer is 6 plus 3x, right? And and it's obvious this is still inside our set. And anyway, you can check carefully. The previous 10 rules I put in the last page are all satisfied in this, in this particular case of set of polynomials. And which means that this one is another example of vector space also. So for example, please look at this set of elements. I'm taking a look at the xy plane, but uh, I would like to look at all points such that the x coordinate is at least zero. It means um, basically I look at only the right hand side of the plane because these are the points where the x coordinate is at least zero. And for each point, obviously, you can look at the corresponding vector starting from the origin, right? And I claim that it is the vector space here. Can you see why? So you actually have to go back to the 10 rules we put earlier, but the fact is that, for example, you can look, look at the rule number five. We claim that there's kind of an additive inverse for each vector on the space, and such that when you add them, it becomes the zero vector. But unfortunately, um, it is not satisfied in the current case, because you see, for example, I randomly take a vector, let's say it's uh, 3, 1, which means I have a vector like this here, the x coordinate is 3, the y coordinate is 1, and you take a look at uh, inverse. The inverse, obviously, should be minus 3, minus 1, right? And if you look at the plane, basically the inverse is here. However, you see this vector is not in our set, it's not in our set. So it means uh, this vector does, doesn't exist in our set S, right? So it means the rule number five is false. You can see it doesn't exist at all. And, and also I think the rule number six is also false. The rule number six says that if you take any constant C, you multiply it to the vector in the set, um, you will get another new vector which is still in the set. And I think it's clearly false. Can you see why? Because for example, I can see to be minus two. It is one of the constant I can choose. And um, you can randomly choose some vector inside the set. And of course, this one, the x coordinate is bigger than zero, right? And uh, of course, it is in our set. However, when you do the scalar multiplication, you get a new vector like this. You see the x now is less than zero. So it's quite obvious that it is not inside our set S, right? And uh, it gives you a sense that the rule number six is now false, right? And um, this is a simple example to see that in some sets, they are actually not vector spaces. So let's take a look at another example. Now I'm taking all the elements, which are two by two invertible matrices inside set S. I claim that it is not a vector space. If you are using the matrix and scalar multiplications as the operations, can you see why it's not a vector space? Please look at the 10 rules we stated earlier. For example, we can look at the first rule. The first rule basically says that if you take any two vectors in a set, when you add them, it is still in the set. And now uh, let's me give a counter example here. For example, let's look at the two matrices M1 and M2. M1 is 1, 2, 4, and M2 is actually minus 1, minus 2, 5, 6, let's say. And uh, let's check these two vectors. Uh, now I call it vector because uh, I'm looking at the topic of vector space. Now, um, are they inside our set S? To, to be inside the set, we need to verify these two matrices are actually invertible. And please recall that uh, to verify a matrix is invertible is actually easy. You can directly take the determinant. And for two by two cases, determinant is easy to find. You see, uh, for the first matrix, the determinant is non-zero because it's minus two. Non-zero means it is actually in S, right? Because it's invertible. So uh, the second case, I think it's also non-zero again. You see, because the determinant is four, which is non-zero, it means M2 must be invertible also. So uh, you see, both matrices are basically in S. However, after addition, can you see what's happening? When you add the two matrices here together, and what you are getting is a matrix like this. When you take the determinant of this matrix, it must be zero because the first row is zero. And zero determinant means um, such a matrix is not invertible. And it means it is not 
in S, right? So the mathematical notation is like this. We first of all have the statement that both M1 and M2 I pick are inside the set. However, when you add them, they are not in the set again. So it means the rule number one now is false for our current set. And for example, we can look at other rules also. I think the rule number three, which says that the zero vector assist is also false in our current set. Because please recall, for two by two matrices, the only possible zero matrix, which we call the zero vector in our terminology now, uh, basically is the matrix where all the entries are zero, right? That's the only possible zero matrix. However, this matrix understands the determinant is zero. It means obviously it is not invertible. It is not in our current set S. And if you look at other rules, there are more rules that are not satisfied in the current set S. Anyway, uh, it just means that our current set of two by two invertible matrices, uh, it is not a vector space. And that's the end of this video.